Today I wanted to share with you my favorite slip joint knife. Uh, this is a Northwoods Hawthorne and I have several other slip joints but this was one of the first ones I bought in my adult life. Uh, since being a kid I haven't really had slip joints. I've used other types of knives, locking blades. But the nostalgia of it at one point got me back into them. And there were several things that uh, really interested me in this knife about 10 years ago when I picked it up. I liked the, the Northwoods brand. One of the main features that differentiates it from other slip joints is they've deeply engraved their logo here rather than having the giant acid etched billboard across the blade. Uh, since that point, I've bought in some other knives with the, the acid etch, and what I realize is that the, as the blade patinas, that acid etch pretty much disappears, so it's really not that annoying. But the Northwoods logo is really nice. This knife, uh, when it comes from the factory, they leave the heat scale on this upper piece, which gives it a nice kind of rustic look. But after you use the knife and get patina on the flat of the blade, it really doesn't uh, stand out much different. Some people say that that, does, that heat treating in the scale uh, does extend into the tang, and that over time that causes this, this to have a little bit of wobble, but I've never noticed that this particular knife has any issues. This particular Northwoods is made by Great Eastern Cutlery down in Titusville, Pennsylvania, which is in the U.S., obviously. And it's really really well finished so the the camel bone inletting is done very nicely i have some northwoods knives that were made by queen city and it's just not quite as tight around the inletting uh, and the peening of the pins isn't quite as nice on those this either but they're they're also very nice knives so this is the hawthorne i think the main thing that i really like about this and why it stays in my rotation above other slip joints i got um, I've picked up since then is is this dog legged handle really gives you a lot of dexterity in using it the knife's finally finished I like the camel bone I really also like the the leather slip that it comes with that makes it easy to carry in your pocket it doesn't float around and end up sideways in the bottom of your pocket and uncomfortable uh, like carrying a knife does alone and it does protect the, the bolsters and the bone a little bit from scratching against my keys uh, this knife also has, if, you've, if you're into slip joints, you've obviously heard the term walk and talk, but really nice walk and talk with this blade. Uh, half stop safety, which to me is, it kind of adds to that walk and talk, but aside from that, it's not, it's not a key safety feature. Some of my knives have it, some don't. But overall, really nice knife, holds a nice edge. It's 1095 steel, so it sharpens up well and holds that edge well. Uh, the it does it can rust and patina though but I find that it's a worthwhile trade-off to have a knife that sharpens up quickly and takes a really keen edge uh, for, for sure you can have this to the point where you can shave the hairs off your hand um, so now that I've tested it and shown that it can't cut the hair off my hands it's clearly time to sharpen it uh, you can certainly sharpen and would be probably more appropriate to do this with a oil stone but uh, I uh, but I use Japanese water stones for this they cut fast and do a nice job the first part of the sharpening for me is to go ahead and sharpen the flat the flats of the blade uh, this isn't strictly necessary and it's not actually sharpening the knife but it does take some metal off of this area and continue to work the blade so that you don't end up with a blade that's very fat at the at the end. So now you can see this is really a lot more what the blade looked like when I first purchased it with the shiny ground flat and then the uh, the rusticated upper portion of the the blade there. Uh, I do this just, like I said, to thin the metal out. I'll polish it on the other side of the stone when we get there. But now it's time to go ahead and start working on the actual cutting edge. So for that, we find that same flat. Peel up a few degrees. And start sharpening.
Uh, with the clip point, you need to roll over onto the tip. Getting the tip of this knife sharp is definitely the most difficult part. Okay, so now you can see after a little more work off camera that I'm gonna have a bald hand if I continue testing this knife. So from this point, uh, you could call it sharp, you could take it to a leather strop with a little bit of compound, which would be a very good option. Or I like to just go ahead and take it to an 8,000 grit stone and finish polishing it there. So I go back to the flat shine that up a little bit. It will just patina after a little bit of use, but nevertheless, I still like to do it. As you can see, that removes the, the marks from the previous grit and brings the blade to a nice shine, high shine. So once the flats are polished up, then it's time to return to the edge. This really isn't sharpening, it's just polishing that, that previously sharpened edge, so not a whole lot of time needed here. So as you can see, paper cut test, uh, it does fold it a little, could be a little bit sharper, but for a knife I just throw in my pocket. That's it. So now that the knife's sharp and where it wants to be, uh, it is important with this 1095 to try it really well. And I also keep a piece of t-shirt, I spray it with a little rim oil, and anytime, especially if I'm out of storm for a while, I'll wipe this down with just a little bit of oil to prevent it from rusting. So one thing that is different than modern stainless steels. If you like this video and want to see more like it, please support us by clicking like and subscribe. Thank you.